Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Former President of South Africa, Khalema Maklante, says now is an excellent opportunity to introduce material change in the country's mining industry. Martin Kremer joins me in studio to discuss the matter further. Hi Martin. Hi Tracy. So why does Khalema Maklante see the current crisis in the mining industry as an opportunity? You know, he's been very close to the mining industry, particularly as a unionist, but then also as a politician. And when that five-month platinum strike took place, you know, he brought uh, you know, business and labor and all the other elements of mining together to try and <coughs> work out uh, some sort of a framework in which people could work safely without um, harm. At that time, there was, there was a lot of violence. And <coughs> he ha had weeks and weeks of engagement with the mining industry, and I think uh, got even greater insight now, there's huge potential with this mining industry, but there's a lot to change. And he feels because of the crisis and because of the fact that a lot of the mining companies are, are no longer making money, they have to look at new ways of doing things. And they do so with a more open mind. And if they can bring <coughs> you know, labor into the party as well, and that's where he comes from, he feels that innovation uh, will be introduced that will make sure that we have uh, a long life for our mining industry. And with the backs to the wall as, as it is at the moment, not only in South Africa but globally in the mining industry, he feels that it's an opportunity. We mustn't see it as a big problem. We see it as an opportunity to really come together in a constructive way within a time frame so that um, we pull ourselves out of this rut. And you know, he cites a lot of examples along the way that we could copy from other countries. And there's a deficit, a trust deficit. Yes between government, labor, and business. How does he intend to address this? Yeah, well, one of the things, you know, he says is that if you look at the German model, the German trade union and unions have always worked far better with government than South African trade unions have. And he puts it down to the co-determination system that they've got there, where they actually bring union representation into the supervisory boards. And he's saying that, you know, information is very, very important to unionists. And perception is also very, very critical and can do a lot of damage because he's saying you know when they read about the big salaries being earned by the CEOs and then they look at their own salaries they can't reconcile the two whereas if they really had insight into what's going on <coughs> in those companies and how difficult it is to get the right leadership you know to put yourself forward and at the same time know what sort of profit margins are on the go he feels that that information is very powerful and he believes it would bring the unions on board in a way that the unions are on board in Germany, where they tend to moderate their demands when things are bad and then try and accelerate them <laughs> when things are good, which is the right thing to do because mining is cyclical and the unions <coughs> don't really go with those cycles because they haven't got the same insight and there's lack of credibility and trust. And he believes if they work together and have the right representation at the right level, the feedback to the people out there should be good. And he's talking from many, many years of union experience. And also, he talks against the background of examples he gives where, you know, in his day, the unions were prepared to make sacrifices in the interests of a better South Africa. And he's looking for that sort of union patri patriotism. He's looking for corporate patriotism. He's looking for the government to play the role so that uh, the whole of this country can benefit from its natural resources, which are not inconsiderable but are worthless unless they turn to positive account profitably. And South Africa's mining industry is struggling <coughs> in terms of productivity. How does he foresee we improve this? You know, he, he's looking at the Swedish model there where <coughs> there's such a close cooperation between business <coughs> and labor and government that there's constant reportage on where the skill shortages are. And, you know, they tended to be able to take in a lot of these migrants that came from Syria because they knew they needed skills in certain areas because it had already been reported. They knew that they had the training, that they could put these people into training immediately because uh, they had the facilities. So they have the, the, the numbers, they have the data, what they're short of, and then they have the facilities and they match that all the time. And at the same time, if you're going into a, a step up, if you're going to modernize and you're going to introduce new equipment, you also need to reskill. But you need to know what sort of skills you need how many of those skills you need, the volume. And he's saying that we should look at countries like Sweden, 
where they actually work out exactly what they need, particularly if we're going to modernize now. <coughs> Maybe this can be the starting point where we work together, find out exactly, do a needs analysis, and then match that uh, and, and make sure that you know we get optimum employment within new eras which are often uh, not uh, labor intensive, but there are a lot of peripheral areas that can absorb that labor. And, uh, and you know, the proper analysis will give the, the proper outcome. But at the same time, he's saying, we just got to do it. We've got to modernize. You know, we can't continue to work in this labor intensive route because you've got to compete with the rest of the miners around the world. If you can't compete, you know, you're just going to slowly shrink and you're going to become not meaningful at all. You've got to match their productivity, you know, the awareness level of, say, the productivity of the Australian miners versus South African miners is huge. And they are machine mediated and they do a much better productivity job. We need to take those benchmarks, you know, try and uh, reach that sort of level uh, and realize that um, unless we do it, it's a lose lose for everybody. Because, uh, you know, you can say you've got a treasure chest of metals and minerals. But if they sterilized in the ground and you can't get them out profitably, they're useless to everybody. So, but if you work together, they can have a spin-off in that uh, that great productivity will not only give you those exports which you need, and he's calling for Treasury to actually reveal, you know, what South Africa needs. It needs a lot more exportation. It needs <laughs> to moderate its importation because of the situation we find ourselves um, <coughs> with the weak rand. With communication and with um, you know putting South Africa first, uh, you know we can come out of this crisis. And he's saying, when there is such a problem like this, often it's a great opportunity. And he would like to see us use the same sort of approach that they used during the World Cup, the World Soccer Cup. You know where they they did so much because they said this is the deadline. You have to do it. This is what you require. Even with the security, all the building of the stadiums, they m met all the deadlines. <coughs> because they had this tight time, time frame, they had a national purpose, they had this great goal, they wanted to put South Africa's uh, best foot forward, and they should maybe adopt a model like this for mining, but have very good time frames where you actually report back, and, and, and it must include all the stakeholders, otherwise it's not really going to get to uh, the end goal that you want. Just as with our Soccer World Cup, th there was a lot of enthusiasm around achieving that goal. We need that same enthusiasm because it's putting bread into people's mouths. It's, uh, it's looking after future generations. It's putting South Africa first. And with the proper leadership, I think you know, we, we could really achieve uh, a new era in South Africa. And that's what he's calling for. And he did it quite lucidly. And he almost did it with um, prescience because I think he believes that some of the wheels have already been put in motion, but they need to be accelerated. So hopefully we will see something very positive come out of this crisis. You don't like a crisis to lead to destruction. You, you need it to lead to construction, and in this case, in the mining sector. Thanks, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Tracy. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the South African mining industry.